The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Parquet tastes so good, it tastes as though it should cost twice as much. That's why millions serve Parquet. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you love it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Let's see what's going on in Summerfield. Vacation time's over for the great Gildersleeve and his little family. The great man is back on the job as water commissioner. Marjorie is fully recovered from her summer romance. And Leroy's sunburned nose has peeled for the third time. It's Saturday morning now, and the Gildersleeve family is just winding up a back-to-school shopping tour at Hogan Brothers' department store. Uh, come on, children, let's get out of here. Oh, Unky, couldn't we go up to the third floor for a minute? I just want to look at bandanas. Now, have a heart, Marjorie. Your old uncle's all in, and so is his pocketbook. We've got all the packages we can carry anyway. Please, let's go home. Come on, Leroy. Where did that kid go? Oh, there he is. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, get off that escalator. Look, Unc, no hands. <laughs> Leroy, stop showing off and come down here. Immediately, pronto. Okay, Unc. We going now? Oh, I just love to go shopping, don't you, Unky? Uh, yes, indeed. Now, if I can just squeeze through this. Don't stand there like a statue, Leroy. Open the door for me. Sure, Unc. Oh. Certainly be glad when we get these things in the car. Come on, children, Goodbye, let's go. Bye, Unky. Huh? Where are you going? Well, I promised to meet Francie at the record shop. Oh. And thanks, Uncle Mort, for getting me that sloppy Joe sweater and those sandals and that darling dress... You're just the best unky in the whole world, and you deserve a great big kiss. <laughs> Run along, my dear. And, Unky, you won't mind taking my packages, will you? Packages? No, not at all. Pile them on. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Leroy, how about taking a few of these packages? Sorry, Unc, I've got to go, too. What? Remember you said I could go to the movies this afternoon? You promised. I did? Well, all right, go ahead. Old Uncle Mort will go home alone. And, Unc, thanks for getting me those cords and that flight jacket. You're a swell guy. And you deserve a great big... Never mind, Leroy. <laughs> Just run along. So long. <laughs> uh, hope I can make it to the parking lot. Uh, uh, children, they're wonderful. But I'm glad I only have to raise two. The way prices are now, one more would put me in the poorhouse. Hmm. Parking lot is doing all right, though. Now, where did I leave my cup? Huh? There it is in that row over there. Oh! Watch where you're going! Out of state license. Uh, uh, I made it. Now, if I can just get this door open. Uh. Uh. What's that? Uh. A baby! Hey, what are you doing in my car? Or did I get the wrong car? Let's see. Hole in the top, dent in the fender, jelly on the seat. Yeah, this is my car. <laughs> How did that baby get in there? Where's that parking attendant? Hey, young man! Yeah? Come here a minute. What's the matter, mister? Look what's in the back of my car. What? On the seat there. Well, what do you know? A baby. Yes, it's a baby, all right. <laughs> yes, sir, cute little baby girl. Kitchy, 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 goo. 
<laughs> no, look here. You bet you're pretty proud of her, all right. What? About uh, six months old, isn't she? I don't know how old she is. Huh? The baby does not belong to me. Somebody left it in my car. Well, what do you know? Wonder who did that? How do I know? Probably some woman shopper got mixed up. You take that baby right out of there, and you keep it till the mother shows up. Well, mister, I ain't got time to take care of a baby. I got cars to park. Well, I haven't got time either. Besides, it's your responsibility. Oh, I don't know about that. You found it in your car. Well, it's your parking lot. Look, see that sign up there? Huh? Not responsible for things taken out of cars. What about it? Well, that goes for things put in cars, too. <laughs> and that includes babies. Look, you... So I... you're on your own, mister. Well, by George, is the last time I'll ever come into this parking lot. It's okay with me. And when that mother shows up, you tell her she'll find her baby down at the police station. It serves her right for being so careless. Okay, I'll tell her. Oh, oh, what a day. Everything happens to me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Here we are, baby. This is where you get off. <laughs> uh, you're a little young to be going to a police station, but don't worry, you won't be here long. Your mom will come and get you. Uh, uh, how do you pick a baby up? Uh, come on. Hold still now. Baby, stop wiggling. Uh, uh, uh. Daisy. Yeah, now I got you. Oop, it maybe you got your little finger in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Mustn't do that. Oh, I forgot your bottle. There. Now if I can just kick this door closed. There. Oh, you're a heavy little rascal. Oh, my goodness, the bottle's upside down. Got milk all over my shoe. Oh, well, I need a shine anyway. Yeah, well, don't worry, don't worry. Chief Gates will take good care of you. Yeah, and there he is. You see him? That fat fellow behind the desk. Oh, Chief. Well, hello, Mr. Gibbs. Well, what have you got there, Commissioner? What does it look like? What are you doing, a little baby sitting on the side? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Uh, look, Chief, I found... Hey, she's sweet. And look at those little blonde curls. Kitchy, 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 coo. Chief! <laughs> Whose baby is she, Commissioner? I don't know. Why? I found her in a parking lot. Parking lot? Yeah, the mother left her in my car. Oh, an abandoned child. Let's not get dramatic, Chief. <laughs> the mother was probably running around shopping and got mixed up, that's all. Oh, well, she certainly is sweet. Uh, yes. You wouldn't believe this, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I had blonde curls like that when I was a baby. Very interesting. <laughs> well, that's a fact. Why, everybody thought I looked like a girl. You've certainly changed, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Chief, I gotta be running along. You can just keep that baby here till the mother shows up. Here's her bottle in case she gets... Now, home. wait a minute, Commissioner. I can't take that baby. Why not? A police station is no place for a baby. You wouldn't want her associating with criminals at her age. Oh, for goodness sake, she's not gonna turn into a pickpocket in one day. I'm sorry, Commissioner, but no can do. That's ridiculous. You always take lost kids to a police station. Not this one. We don't have the proper facilities. What a baby needs is a woman's care. Well, you used to look like a girl. <laughs> now, Commissioner, I'll tell you what you do. You just take Babykin's home. Oh? Yes, and Bertie can take care of it until you hear from us. But, Chief... That's an order from the police department. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Goodbye, baby king. <laughs> kitchy, 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 cool. Oh, kitchy, kitchy, cool yourself. <laughs> Got to get me out of this. He's supposed to be my lawyer. 
Yes, I know. You're a nice little baby, but I can't take you home. Come on. Hello, Gildy. Well, a baby. How did you guess? Oh, I must say that you make a very fetching nursemaid. <laughs> You can skip the so-called humor, Judge. My, she's a chubby little youngster. Hello there. Kitchy, 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 goo. Judge, is that all anybody can say? Look, Horace, you've got to help me out. I found this baby. I know, Gildy, I know. Chief Gates just phoned me. Oh, he did? Well, what am I going to do? I don't see why I should have to take care of her. How do I know when the mother will show up? Now, keep cool, Gildy. Just sit down and relax. Well, I'll sit down, but I won't relax. <laughs> Hold still now, baby. <laughs> well, you're my lawyer, Judge. What do I do? I've got that all worked out, Gilda. <laughs> Hurry up, Horace. Well, first of all, let's examine the facts. Ye gods, get to the point. Well, Gildy, right now, the baby is in your possession. I don't need a lawyer to tell me that. And in the legal phraseology of Blackstone, possession is nine points of the law. But... You mean I've got to keep the baby? I thought you said you had it all worked out. I have, Gildy. Your worries are all over. I'm going to take the little tyke off your hands. You are? Are you going to keep her? Well, not exactly. A uh, Miss Simpson runs a very fine foundling home a few miles out of town. I'll simply put the child in her care until the mother returns. Well, that's wonderful, Judge. I don't know how to thank you, old friend. That's all right, Gildy. That's what friends are for. You're true blue, Horace. And I'm sorry that I called you harsh names in the past, like windbag and old bag of bones. Don't mention it, Gildy. And I'm sorry that I've sometimes referred to you as Fatty Face. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> well, guess I'll be going. Here's the baby, Horace. Oh, I can't take her now, Gildy. What? Why, it'll take several days to get her in the home. Several days? Well, they're overcrowded. There'll be forms to fill out. Red tape. So you just take the baby home. But just... Now, now, don't worry, Gildy. It won't take me long. By the time you get her in that home, she'll have a family of her own. <laughs> Gildy! You old windbag... Fatty face! Bag of bones! <laughs> now look what you did. Don't cry, baby. <laughs> don't cry now. I'm going to take you home. How do I get into these things? <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. You know, Bertie, the Gildersleeve housekeeper, tells me she isn't settled in her ways. She just doesn't get settled about something until she finds out it's really good. That right, Bertie? No change in me when I know something's extra good. I guess you're settled on parquet, then. It tastes so good, that's why. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's natural, Bertie. Parquet, which costs only about half as much as the most costly spreads, is prepared as carefully as a rare luxury food. Only selected products of American farms are used in making it. That's why parquet has such a sweet, light flavor and makes such a delicious topping for rolls, waffles, pancakes, biscuits, as well as bread. And parquet is as nourishing as it is delicious. Every pound is packed with food value, plus 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. It tastes so good, that's what settled me. Well, most people are like you, Bertie. They like parquet because it's just grand food to eat. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. So, friends, try parquet, the delicious spread that tastes as though it should cost twice as much. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Well, it's late afternoon now, and the great Gildersleeve still has a little visitor at his house. The little stranger's made herself right at home in the living room. Right now, she's contentedly surveying the world from the bottom of a clothes basket. Hello, little sweetheart. Hello, little blue eyes. Marjorie, get away from that baby. You've been bothering her all afternoon. Unky, can't I pick her up and hold her just once more? Please, Marjorie, just leave her there in the basket. Maybe she'll go to sleep. All right. Oh, Uncle Mort, I'm going to get married and have a baby girl just like her. Yeah, maybe you'd better finish high school first. <laughs> you have plenty of time to get... That must be Chief Gates. 
Maybe the mother's turned up. It's about time. Hello? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Chief. Is the mother down there? No, she hasn't shown up all day. Uh. You know what I think, Commissioner? I don't think she's coming back. That's certainly using your head, Chief. Thanks. That's what I get paid for. Uh, you've got to do something, Chief. Send your men out and find her. Don't worry. You just sit tight. Y- sit tight. And, Commissioner... Yes? Give my love to baby Ken. Oh, Alfred, goodbye. Where is that mother? Did they find her yet, Unky? No, not yet. Oh, Unky, couldn't we keep the baby here just till Mother comes back? Uh, Marjorie, you know we can't do that. Why, the mother might not show up for months. Well, I take real good care of it, and you wouldn't have no, to do it. Oh, my dear, you know, just get the idea out of your head. The baby will be a lot better off in that foundling home. Besides, we can... Hi! Leroy, do you have to slam that door? What a movie, Unky. You should have seen an old text clean up those cattle rustlers. Bang! Bang! Leroy! Be quiet. The baby's trying to sleep. Yeah, old text, you're... Baby. Gee, it is a baby. Where'd it come from? Unky found it in the parking lot. Huh? (laughs) We're just keeping it for somebody. Keeping it for somebody? Who? I don't know. What? Now, Leroy, don't ask a lot of questions. It's only going to be here for a day or two. Oh, that's good. Look at her, Leroy. Isn't she a cute little girl? Cute? She looks goofy to me. Well, she does not. She's beautiful. Ah, that little squirt. She looks goofy. Well, when you were a baby, Leroy, you looked pretty goofy yourself. Everybody said I looked just like you, huh? Leroy! <laughs> you may go upstairs. See, smarty. No. And you too, Marjorie. We'll just let the baby sleep now. Oh, all right. Goodbye, little sweetheart. Goodbye, little sweetheart. Oh, you keep still. Uh, children, and now I've got three of them. Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, Bertie? Baby all right? Uh, seems to be fine. Well, I'm getting her next feeding ready. <laughs> oh, I guess you must have heard me. Look at her. Yeah. Mr. Gildersleeve, isn't that the prettiest little thing you ever saw? Yeah, she sure is. <laughs> By the way, Bertie, there's no sign of the mother yet. Oh, that's a shame. Looks like we may have to keep the baby for a few days. Oh, that's nice, Mr. Gillespie. I was going to hate to see her go. As far as I'm concerned, we could just keep her here forever. Well, we couldn't do that, Bertie. I'm afraid we're going to have to let the judge put her in that foundling home. Oh. What's the matter? You think that's the best place for her, don't you? Well, if you say so, it was up to me. I wouldn't let that child go to no home. I'd keep her right here with us. But it ain't up to me. It's up to you. But, Bertie, this baby isn't our responsibility. You know that. Yes, sir. I know it, but that little baby don't. All she knows is she wants love and affection. But it ain't up to me. It's up to you. But, Bertie... It's up to you if you got your mind made up to send that poor little thing away. You send her away. It ain't up to me. It's up to you. Now, look, Bertie... If it was up to me, she'd stay right here in that clothes basket. But it ain't up to me. But, Bertie... No, sir. It's up to you. Yes, I wish it wasn't up to me. Why does everybody have to be so unreasonable? About all I can do to just raise Leroy and Marjorie. You, Rock Oh, Oh, Adeline. Well, come in. Rock what's all this I hear about you, Sonny? Oh, there she is, in a clothes basket. Isn't she cunning? Yes, she is. Oh, look at those pink cheeks. Uh, you are just a regular little peach blossom. That's what you is. Kitty, 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 goo. Throckmorton, you're wonderful. Huh? <laughs> Taking care of this little waif. Well. Yes, indeed. Why, you're a knight in shining armor. I am? Yes, sirree. I can just see you rescuing that little child and riding away on your white horse. Well, not a horse exactly. Just my old Studebaker. (laughs) Oh, it's wonderful you've taken this little bundle of heaven into your home. Well, it's just for a few days. (laughs) Too bad you're not going to keep her longer. Be so much fun for us. Fun, um, um, for us? Oh, of course, silly. I could come over in the evening and help your babysit. Yeah. <laughs> you were? Mm-hmm. 
and we could kitschy coo the baby together. <laughs> well, and maybe after the baby's asleep, we could sit on a sofa and do a little kitschy cooing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you. Uh, maybe we could start tonight, Adeline. Rock Morton. Yes? You know, I just thought of something. What's that? Well, after a while, maybe we'd get so used to the baby, we'd want to keep it for our very own. Huh? <laughs> of course, we'd have to go through some silly little old formalities, like a marriage ceremony. Marriage ceremony? Why, Yes. Rock Morton, where are you going? Down to Peavy's to get some cough syrup for the baby. Well, the baby isn't coughing. Don't want to take any chances. Goodbye. Hello, Phoebe. Oh, hello, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? rock a baby on the treetop. What? When the wind blows, you crazy. Peavy, do you have to sing that song? Well, it seems rather appropriate in view of your little visitor. Uh Uh-huh. According to the judge, she's quite an attractive little tot. Yes. I tell you, there's nothing can get under your skin like a baby can. (laughs) Like a baby can. That's a little witticism. They sometimes call baby baby can. I know, Pete. Well, I thought that was rather humorous. Yeah. Baby can, baby kid. All right. <laughs> you know, Peavy, people can be awfully unreasonable sometimes. Yeah, some people can, I guess. Just because I found this baby, everybody thinks I ought to keep her. Now, let me ask you something. All right. Suppose you'd found this baby in a parking lot. Oh, that couldn't happen to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why not? I never go to a parking lot. I always park in the alley and shave a quarter. Mm. <laughs> All right. But say you did find this baby and you took it home. Now, what would you do? Well, first of all, I'd have to explain it to Mrs. Peavy. Can't you leave Mrs. Peavy out of this? Mr. Gildersleeve, you don't know Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> Well, tell me just one thing. Would you keep her or send her away? Who, Mrs. Peavy? No! <laughs> I don't know why I came in here. Peavy, you're a big help. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I'll figure this out for myself. Uh, Mr. Gillespie, if you really want my advice... Yes, Peavy? After this, I'd park my car in the alley. Oh! <laughs> Yes, Bertie. Got some news for you. Gonna make you mighty happy. Oh, you have? What's that? The judge phoned. Said he fixed things for the baby to go to that home tonight. He did? Yes, sir. He's coming over to get her right now. Well, that's fine. Yes, sir. <laughs> Where's Marjorie? Up in her room. She don't feel so good. Oh, well, she'll get over it. This is the best way, Bertie. Yes, if you say so. It ain't up to me. It's up to you. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll be glad when this is over. Better make sure the baby's ready. Hello. How are you? Well, that's good. Uh, baby, I don't suppose anybody's told you, but you're going away to a nice home. You won't mind that, will you? Yeah, of course not. You meet a lot of other little babies there, too. You'll have lots of fun. (laughs) Gee, you are cute. Baby, you understand, don't you? You know I don't want to send you away. But it's for your own good. And you'll be happy there, too. In a day or two, you'll forget all about us. Won't you? Sure. Wish you wouldn't look at me like that. <laughs> well, you got to get ready. Let me tie your little bonnet. Oop. Say, that's my thumb you got there. Let go now. Let go. Look at those little fingers. 
They're so tiny. Let go now. <laughs> oh. I'll get it. Well, guess that's the judge. Afternoon, Judge. Hello, Birdie. The baby already? Yes, yeah, so she's in the living room. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, baby, guess it's time for you to go. Well, hello, Gilda. Hello, Judge. Well, if I do say so myself, I handled this matter with a great deal of speed and dispatch. I knew you were in a hurry, so I... Yes, Judge, I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, is the uh, little infant already? Uh, yes. Then I better get started. If you'll just hand her to me... Um, Judge, you sure the home isn't too overcrowded now? Oh, no. All the arrangements are made. Miss Simpson has an empty crib waiting. Oh, she has, huh? Well, uh, don't you think you ought to wait till the morning, Judge? It's getting a little chilly out. Now, don't worry, Gildy. I'll bundle her up. Well, come on. Give me the baby. Well, I can't. She won't let go of my thumb. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Look out. I'll pick her up. There you are, baby. Well, bye, Gildy. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, baby. <laughs> Don't start to cry. Come on, now. Who could give me that baby? What? Don't argue with me. Give her back to me. Come on, baby. You see, she doesn't want to go with you. She wants to stay here with me. Don't you, baby? <laughs> but, Gilday, Miss Simpson's expecting her. What about that empty crib? Miss Simpson can put you in the empty crib, you old goat. <laughs> Gilday, you're an old faker. Well, maybe I am. Kitchy, 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 goo. <laughs> She's got my thumb again. The great Gildersleeve and the Hugh Ward will be back again very soon. It's only when you try it that you really know how good parquet tastes. Yes, when you try parquet margarine on hot muffins, waffles, biscuits, pancakes, as well as bread, you can tell it's been prepared like a rare luxury food. For parquet tastes like a luxury, tastes as though it should cost twice as much. Parquet is nourishing and fortified with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. It's economical, costs only about half as much as the most costly spreads. But most important, parquet tastes so good, tastes as though it should cost twice as much. Ask for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Uh, Come on now, give Uncle Throckmorton a great big smile. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Miss Gilfried, you better get started now. You're going to be late for work. Oh, yes, I guess I will. Well... And on the way home tonight, would you mind stopping at Hogan Brothers and getting a few things? Hogan Brothers? I just went shopping there. <laughs> yes, sir. But you got an addition to the family now, and she needs a lot of things. Here's the list. Oh, thanks. Let's see here. Crib, two blankets, six nightshirts, um, baby dresses. Didn't know babies were so expensive. Oh, well. What the heck? They're worth it. That's where my money goes to buy my baby clothes. Leroy! The Great Gilded Street is played by Harold Terry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Nuna Merkel. The show was written by Dean Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Newton. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Good night. Here's a quick, easy way to make midnight snacks, cold meats, and cheese sandwiches much more delicious. Just add a little craft prepared mustard, and you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop out. Every bite is more delicious. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Light, delicately spiced salad mustard for those who prefer mild mustard and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on your shelf. Then with every meat dish you serve, add a little mustard and you add a lot of tang. Ask for Kraft prepared mustard. This is NBC.